Hey folks, Kubota Track here, and I want to talk to you about these parts that I picked up yesterday at the Kubota dealer. I was there to pick up a barrel of uh, Super UDT2. It's the only hydraulic fluid I run in my tractors. And uh, they had a table set up, just like this one, uh, with a bunch of parts on it uh, that, was, that had a sign that said make offer. They were all open boxes, missing parts. This is missing a bunch of parts, uh, but the bones are here. And this is a uh, bucket leveling kit for a newer Kubota BX. Um, the tube, the mount, and uh, I don't know what that is, the indicator, I guess. Uh, but I got it all for five bucks. They, they took five bucks for it. And uh, I've done this before. You can see a, uh, a bucket leveling gizmo that I attached there. And I got the parts from eBay. Uh, again, some stuff that was missing uh, pieces. I paid $12 for it delivered. And uh, I, I got the extra parts and I put it together and I made it work. It's not how it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be a silver rod, uh, but I used one of those pins that you can use on your snow plow or, uh, you know, to mark out the end of your driveway so your snow plow doesn't tear up your grass. I don't know what they're called. They're like a buck and a quarter at Lowe's. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to uh, try to print off the parts list for this to see what I'm missing. And then I'm just going to run down to the local big box store and uh, pick up the parts that I need to, uh, to attach this to my tractor. Now, I do not have a newer BX. I have a 2015 BX25. Uh, that is supposed, the leveling kit that I have is supposed to be used with a quick attach. Uh, I have a pin bucket, so uh, there's going to be a little bit of finagling here to get this on and to make it work. But we're going to give it a try, and the worst that could happen is I just waste a little bit of time messing around with it. So be right back. Okay, folks, so uh, I just pulled the uh, parts list off the computer. It took me about 20 minutes to find. I found it at Messix. I'll put the uh, part number of the instructions in the link below, so it'll be a lot easier for you to find. Uh, but what it looks like I need is I need this bolt. Um, I've already got the rod, so I'm not really worried about that. I need a locking nut, hex bolt, I need a cotter pin. That's a split pin, some washers. And all these things I probably have here. I may have to just run down uh, to the hardware store and pick a few up. Um, the sizes are all over in this column here. They're all metric, obviously. And so, uh, like I said, I may have some of this stuff laying around, but uh, I'm going to go check and see what I have. Now, whatever I don't have, I'm going to go pick up down at the, uh, at the big box, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, folks, so I, I went and uh, pulled out all my buckets of stuff that I had. I pretty much had everything, but I still ran down to the store just to pick up a couple of things. Um, I wanted to pick up the uh, bolts for this. Um, I wanted to use hardened bolts instead of the, the cheap ones that I had. Um, they, they weren't very strong, I don't think. Um, I just wanted to get something that was a little more rigid than what I had. So I got those, and I also picked up this eyelet here. Um, I picked it up in stainless. Um, and I'm going to figure out a way to mount that to the arms of the loader. So this is what I'm supposed to have on there if I had a newer BX, and the guide rod would slide through this opening here. But uh, this is meant to bolt onto a flat spot that already exists on the new BX loader. And I don't have a flat spot to bolt this onto. I could probably heat this up and bend it around, but I think instead of monkeying around with all that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go with this, but we'll see as we go along. Uh, let's go on over to the tractor and we'll mark out the spot on the loader for these uh, holes to be drilled and we'll get that done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this bracket um, right on here in this position. Now, I don't have a whole lot uh, on this hole, but I think I got enough. It's pretty, uh, pretty thick, so I'm going to go ahead and mark these here, and mark that there, and then drill those holes. And I don't really need to have a whole lot of concern for this uh, piece right down here where the pin is, um, because this is matched to pass that. So when this, oops, when this is on, I'll be able to um, move the bucket uh, completely down to drop whatever's in the bucket out. 
uh, without the rod hitting this, or at least I hope so. If not, I can always back uh, these bolts that I put in here out and just put some collets in or some washers to space it out. So this is where this is going to go. I'm going to get the drill and I'm going to drill this out and then we'll be right back. Okay, folks, so as you can see, the holes are drilled here, and I got these stainless steel uh, nuts, bolts, and washers to put on. I was down there. It's only a couple of bucks, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on there, and I'm going to run these bolts through it and tighten it down. I will spare you the agony of watching me tighten bolts, and I'll be right back. Okay, folks, so you can see I got this mount bolted in, and it's tight, and it's right where I want it to be. So the next thing to do is to take the rod guide and put it on there and kind of look and see how it's going to fit up and right away I've got a hurdle I have to overcome so the sharp edges on this right here are going to have to be rounded down uh, like I said this isn't made for this so I'm going to have to do a little improvising to make it work and the first improvisation is going to be to round these off so that this swings freely otherwise if it doesn't when the bucket goes to completely drop the load of dirt or rocks, whatever I have in it, this is going to break uh, the rod, the rod, the telescoping rod. So let me uh, get this fixed and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I got this ground down here a little bit, you can see that that slides right on there. And then we'll put a washer there for good measure and put the pin in. I'm not going to roll this pin over yet because I'm still kind of in the mock-up phase. And then if we take this rod and I slide it down here, we start to get an idea on how this is going to look. So the important thing is that I have enough room there, and you can see that I do, even when I get down close to it, you can see that I have enough room there somewhere to put an eyelet in in order to keep that uh, guide rod or indicator rod. How long that is, I'm going to cut that down so it's not so long. Uh, but in order to keep that guide rod off of this area right here. So I guess I'm going to move this out of the way, the camera out of the way, and I'm going to move the loader up and down a few times and figure out where that eyelet should go, and then we'll, uh, we'll be right back. All right, so uh, I started the tractor up and I rolled the bucket into the dump position. And as you can see here, this rod is hitting the cross member that's there and that's no good that won't work so what i have to do is i have to figure out how to get this lifted up off of that cross member let me set the camera here if i come around here and if i was to take this stainless steel eyelet and weld it right there I would be perfect. I'd be good to go. That would almost be the thing to do um, if I wasn't making a video because I could just weld it in. I could cut the back of this off. I could spray paint it and then it would be done. But I understand not everybody has a welding machine. So I'm going to fall on the sword for all my wonderful subscribers and I'm going to drill a hole through this cross beam and i know that a lot of you are going to absolutely lose your shit when i do that um, but it's my tractor so i'm going to drill a hole through here and through the bottom and run this eyelet through and that will just about finish this job up so let me get it marked out and uh, i'll drill the hole and we'll be right back okay so as you can see i drilled a hole in the bottom this is the bottom of the loader and these are the hydraulic lines that run underneath there and when you come over this way you can drop the bucket you can see that i drilled a hole from the top down here right straight through so i'm going to drop that eyelet in i'm going to bolt it up and then uh, we'll take this rod here and we'll cut it and mark it and we'll put it in and uh, i'll show you how i mark it using some heat shrinks uh, and then we'll wrap this video up Okay, so as you can see, this is all in now, and uh, we're pretty good to go. I've got the rod that I picked up uh, set inside the rod guide, and all I'm going to do is take it all the way down so that, I don't know, it's about that much above the eyelet, okay? And then I'll take my 
tape measure and I'll measure from, I'm gonna get that under there, nope. I'll measure from the tip of the rod to, I don't know, somewhere between the end of the rod guide and the tip, right? So let's just say 28 inches, which is going to put me somewhere in this neighborhood down here. So I'm gonna cut this guide rod at 28 inches and then set it back in. And uh, the important thing to remember when you do this is to make sure that the bucket is in the dump position. Make sure it's in the complete low position because that, that's as far out as this rod is gonna be. When the bucket comes back up, this rod is gonna extend up this way. So um, that's one of those things where you wanna measure twice and cut once. So we're gonna cut this 28 inches from the end of here to the end of the rod and we'll be right back. Okay, so the rod is cut at 28 inches end to end, okay? And I'm gonna thread it through here and then into the guide rod and I'm gonna run it down to where I was before. And that was, you know, just right about there. This is one of these things where close enough is good enough for the moment. You don't have to get too, too tight. So now I'm gonna start the tractor, I'm gonna run the bucket up to level, and then we're gonna mark uh, on both sides of this eyelet where level is. So I'm gonna start it up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't know if that's gonna show up or not, but that's a torpedo level in my bucket. And it is showing that the bucket is dead level right now. I tried to do it with the engine running and everything, but the, the fumes got to be too much in here. So um, that shows that the bucket is at dead level right now. So if we get up and we come on over here, you can see right where this is here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on a tripod so I have two hands and I'm gonna mark that exactly where that is. And then uh, I'm gonna use heat shrinks above it and below that mark uh, to let me know when that is uh, inside the eyelet completely. I'll be able to see it from, uh, from the tractor seat. So uh, let me grab a marker, I'll be right back. All right, with the bucket level, uh, we have the rod set where it belongs. We're gonna take a marker and we're gonna mark where the top of the eyelet is, where the bottom of the eyelet is, and right before, right where it goes in there. So we have three marks. We're gonna put a heat shrink on here and shrink it. We're gonna take a heat shrink, we're gonna cut it uh, just below this, uh, inside the uh, rod, so that uh, there's only orange that you see here. So I know that if I see black coming out of here, I'm too high. And if I see this up too high, I know I'm too high also. So you'll see how I do it. There's three pieces of uh, shrink tubing I'm going to put on there. It stays in place. It makes a good marking system. And uh, I'm going to use these marks to guide them. So. I'm gonna head over to the bench and put these on and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, folks, so here we are over on the bench and I, I've got the pin here with the marks that you can see there. These 3 8 heat shrinks that I got from the local big box store. I'm just gonna slide them down onto this marking pin and uh, they, they fit really well. Um, and when I set both of them on, you'll see that it leaves a little gap here that you can see that's in orange. Now the thickness of this, even when it's uh, shrunken down, is greater than the thickness of this orange pin. So when it rides through the eyelet, you'll actually see the bar drop down uh, when it gets to the orange part. So it, it's a real easy indicator uh, to see, see what's going on. So uh, I'm gonna use this torch uh, to shrink these tubes and then we're going to go on back over to the tractor, put it on and, and we'll do a demo for you. 
All right, folks, so here's the completed job. You can see how nice the heat shrinks look once they're shrunken down. They look very neat, very professional, and I don't think you can see it from that angle, but that orange spot is inside the eyelet. So I'm pretty happy with this. It looks pretty good. Let's take it outside and see how well it performs. Hey folks, so we're outside and there's a little bit of work going on around me and the only place that I really had to put the tractor on is a little bit of an incline, so I didn't want that to get in the way or to kind of give you any false look. So there's a torpedo level on the bucket. You can see that the bucket's level and when we roll back and take a look at the level gauge, you can see that it's, it's right inside the eyelet just like it's supposed to. So let's put the camera back on the tripod and we'll do a quick functions check and make sure that nothing's binding or hanging up anywhere and that everything just seems to be moving properly. Well, that does it for me. This uh, turned out to be a pretty good find and a pretty good install, so I'm really happy with it. If you're happy with this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Good luck and Godspeed. Photo Track out.